Hi, this is Charlie Hesse from Tropical Birding and welcome to this virtual bird tour of Ghana. Ghana is one of the safest and friendliest countries in Africa and it's got some really amazing birds, um, including this white-necked rockfowl, which is um, probably the biggest target of the tour. And the rockfowl, or Picathates, are a family of two species that we found in Africa. Um, incredibly secretive birds that nest in uh, big rock faces. Um, and they've traditionally been some of the really most difficult birds to find. Um, but Ghana has established itself as really the place to look for these. Uh, and our ground agent uh, prides himself in never having missed it. So yeah, very good chance. A lot else to see in Ghana, some other really amazing birds um, and uh, different uh, habitats. We'll start with uh, an overview of the tour. Ghana is quite a small country in West Africa. It's kind of elongated north to, north to south. It's bordered by Burkina Faso in the north, um, Togo in the east, and Côte d'Ivoire in the west. One of the great things about doing a tour in Ghana are the local guides. They're a really amazing bunch of guys. Uh, fantastic birders, really excellent guys, some of the best local guides in Africa. And they just really make the tour very special as well, they work really hard, They're really nice guys. Ghanaians, you'll notice once you get here, they love bright colours, everybody's wearing bright dresses and bright shirts and things like that. And they, um, they actually make the fabrics in Ghana, they're hand printed batik fabrics and I got into the habit of um, buying quite a lot of fabrics when I came here <laughs> to bring back for my wife. But yeah, some really, uh, really beautiful things. So another thing to look forward to in uh, Accra. Okay, here's a Google Earth image of Ghana. You can see it's very green in the south and very uh, dry in the north. We're going to start the tour at Accra Airport um, and we're going to get out of the city a little bit to the suburbs. Um, uh, to our hotel. We're going to start the tour in a place called Atewa. Uh, this used to be on the main tour, but it's quite a physical hike. It's not really difficult, it's just very long, so it was quite tiring for some people, so we decided to make this into an extension. We're going to be birding some disturbed areas at the base here, and then uh, we're going to have a full day hike up into the upper areas of the Atewa range. This is us birding uh, the lower areas with the guides finding things in the scopes for us. Um, some of the things we can expect to find in the, the lower areas include things like uh, blue-headed kukul, white-throated bee-eater, and African hobby. And there's quite a lot of different types of waxbills as well, waxbills and mannequins like this uh, orange-cheeked waxbill. Another member of the waxbill family, this is uh, a white-breasted negrita, which is more on sort of rainforest edge. Um, a lot of weavers, very high weaver diversity here. Uh, this is a wonderful picture taken by Ken Behrens um, of the Veilers weaver. Another family that's very diverse are the green bulls, the bull bulls and green bulls. Uh, there's an awful lot of them. A lot of them look quite similar to each other um, and you usually separate them by call. This is a grey green bull. We may see our first mammals in the, in the shape of a fruit bat. This is the Gambian epauletted fruit bat. And at night, we'll go out onto the forest edge and one of our tours where we were lucky enough to see this huge Fraser's Eagle Owl. The next day, we're going to be walking up into the forest. We're going to see our first forest birds. This was a, quite a rare bird that we managed to find called the uh, Cassin's Hawk Eagle. Um, another rarity that we've seen in the past has been the yellow-throated cuckoo. And this is a fairly common bird, not always easy to see. It's got a very distinctive call. Uh, it used to be called the yellow bill, but now they split it into blue malcoa. We may see our first hornbills. This is a, um, a forest hornbill called the white crested hornbill. Very unusual looking bird with this long tail. And of course a lot of starlings as well. This is a forest starling known as chestnut winged starling. Um, okay, we're up in the higher reaches of uh, the Atewa range now. One of the real rarities and um, that we have a, a small chance to see is called the Nimba flycatcher. Very, very difficult bird. But I would say our main target up there um, is called the blue moustached bee eater. It used to be called the blue headed bee eater and it was split. Um, now this is one of the uh, better places to see it. Um, really nice dark blue color. From Atewa, we're going to drive back to Accra, meet up with any clients that are joining the main tour. And our first birding site is going to be called Sakumono Lagoon. It's just on 
on the coastal road. Here you can see the coast. It's a road that goes along the coast and we just pull over and we scan from the side of the road. Very good for water birds. Here's Sakumono Lagoon. They've even got a little viewing tower now, which is quite useful. Lots of water birds here, lots of shorebirds, stilts and migratory shorebirds. It's uh, really nice. Also, you can see uh, some terns here as well. Here's sandwich and lesser crested terns. We may also see our first pied kingfishers here. From the coast road, we're going to drive around to the uh, other side of the lagoon and um, where there's a nice area of scrub and open habitat. Here we're going to look for the Senegal thickney, very unusual nocturnal bird. Um, we sometimes come across um, day roosting long tailed night jars here. And we should see some other common birds like Western plantain eater, a green wood hoopoe, very noisy. Um, another common bird here is the yellow billed shrike, a very unusual looking shrike, kind of brown streaky plumage with this bright yellow bill. And this is the brown babbler. This is quite a memorable bird for me. It was actually my 5,000th species quite a few years ago now. Some of the smaller birds include Senegal eremomola. Should get our first sunbirds, like this uh, copper sunbird. Um, this is a village weaver building a nest. The next morning, we are going to go and explore an area called the Shy Hills. This is our next birding site. Um, it's an area of low hills just outside of Accra, um, surrounded by nice uh, Guinea savanna. This is what the habitat looks like there. Um, it's very open, grassy, and little dotted small trees. And there are the hills in the background. They're made up of big rocks and boulders covered with trees and bushes. This is one of the most famous residents, it's called the Cobb. It's a type of a very beautiful antelope. We may also see um, olive baboons here. As far as birds go, this is one of our big targets, it's called the stone partridge. We will be going, we'll be birding around the um, edge of the rocks looking for these. They've got a very distinctive call. Very unusual bird. Uh, they actually moved from the old world partridges and pheasants family and into the new world partridges so that's a very strange thing. Some of the birds we're going to be looking for include uh, Violaceous turaco uh, and when they fly they show these beautiful red feathers and very unique thing of, um, of turacos and they actually got a unique pigment in nature called turacin, a copper based pigment. Um, another target here is a blue bellied roller Fairly sedate colours when it's perched, but when it flies, it's got these beautiful uh, deep blue and pale blue patches in the wings. In the south, uh, there's mainly sort of rainforest, humid rainforest, but um, there's a few patches of these savannas, and you get some of the birds that are otherwise only found in the north, like this um, bearded barbet. Another bird we might see is a white helmet shrike. This um, local race here has got a very large crest. Some of the birds include um, black-capped babbler and some more sunbirds, like this olive-bellied sunbird. From the Shy Hills, we're going to drive back through Accra and um, along the coast to a city called Cape Coast. Some nice beaches along here. And there's also a very famous castle, quite a um, dark history in the slave trade. It was built in the 17th and 18th centuries um, as like a slave trading post. Um, we're going to be having lunch just here, and it's nice to escape the, the heat, and there's a nice ocean breeze here. It's got a very sort of laid-back atmosphere here, everybody's sort of hanging around, sleeping under trees, and just get these uh, local salespeople as well, carrying things around on the head. Um, you don't see a lot of birds here, but we should see some, plenty of uh, yellow-billed kites floating around. Our guide um, actually lives here, and he introduced us to his wife when we went through. Interestingly, he also introduced me to his his baby, who was on his wife's back there, um, and he told me her name, and it, it didn't sound a very African name. And a while later, I met um, a friend of my wife, and she said when she was in Ghana, she got on so well with the guide that he named his, uh, his daughter after her. So it was actually the same person, so it's quite a small world. From Cape Coast, we're going to drive north to Kakam National Park, really nice area of rainforest. 
The rainforest is never an easy habitat to bird. Down below, it's, it's very dark and difficult to see and skulking birds. And up in the, you know, things are so high up in the canopy that it's difficult to see them. So uh, we're very lucky here to have um, a canopy walkway. It's one of the longest ones in Africa, I think. And it's a, uh, it's a wonderful place to bird. Here's a little panoramic view of the, of the platform up there. We do most of our birding from the platform itself. And then we use these walkways to access the other platforms. But yeah, really great place to bird. It's got really good for hornbills and different things. This is me taking a selfie from the tower with a local guide and some clients. So it's quite high up, but it's, uh, it's very well made and it's very secure. You walk on these planks, we have these little uh, walls of, of nets on each side. So you sort of hold the ropes as you walk along. So they're, they're very safe. Uh, it's usually pretty quiet up there, but sometimes you'll get a, a school group coming through, but they, but they pass through pretty quickly. We'll spend quite a while out on these um, platforms. Some of the things we might see include monkeys. Um, you get this uh, lesser spot nose monkey. I've never actually seen this one here, but my boss did a, a tour there recently and he photographed this long-tailed pangolin. It's like an arboreal pangolin. Some of the birds we might see, there's six species of hornbills present here. This is the smallest of them. It's called the black dwarf hornbill. And they'll actually perch on these uh, wires sometimes. Another one is the African pied hornbill. Good place for raptors as well. This is a very rare raptor called the Congo serpent eagle. Um, another bird using the structure here is a uh, velvet mantled drongo. There's lots of uh, canopy birds. This is a very localized one, very special one called sharps and palers. It's a West African endemic. And some other canopy species like this green hylia. And there's also quite a few forest weavers as well. This is the yellow mantled weaver and the Prusa's golden weaver. Um, and sometimes we also get um, flocking species coming through. Um, this is a Sabine's puffback type of bush shrike. We're gonna move down into the understory, very dark down here, um, very challenging birding. The light's tricky and um, a lot of very, very skulky birds. So um, it's a real challenge, but there's some quite nice birds down there. This is one of the birds that we might see, the Western bearded green bull. There's an awful lot of different green bulls. Um, best way to tell them apart is by their calls, and the local guides are very knowledgeable about bird calls. Uh, another bird we might see is a grey-throated tipped flycatcher. It's not all birds. Uh, sometimes we find some interesting reptiles as well, like this uh, West African leaf viper. And afterwards, we'll head back to the entrance where there's a little gift shop selling these beautiful colourful dresses and bags. And there's usually a few common agamas scurrying around. We may also come back at night to look for owls. And one year we had this very rare owl called the Akun Eagle Owl. It's a really special bird. That's our birding at Kakam in the primary forest there. Um, next, we're going to go to an area nearby called Ebekaupa. This is very disturbed habitat. It's plantations, little remnant patches of forest and dotted trees. A lot of uh, agriculture there. But we've probably been struggling to see a lot of birds at Kakam. But when you get out here in the farm bush, as they call it, it's just full of birds. There's birds everywhere. It's amazing. Okay, this is us starting to bird the farm bush. It's these banana trees and, um, and palm trees. This is often where we come in contact with local people, which is always interesting. Just living their daily lives. This is people harvesting cassava here. And then we're kind of walking past their houses and everybody's very friendly. Some ladies some pr processing some uh, palm oil from the, um, from the oil palm seeds. And they also grow cacao here from producing chocolate. Um, and the guide was just breaking one open, showing us that you can actually eat the, the fruits inside. Um, some of the birds we might see along here are things like um, grey kestrel, very rare raptor in this area called the long-tailed hawk. Here you can see it in flight. Um, another raptor we might see, the red-chested goshawk. There's quite a few bee-eaters available on this tour. This is one of my favorites called the black bee-eater. Uh, mainly black plumage with this sort of electric blue rump and streaks and then this nice red throat. Another bee-eater we often see um, in a farm bush is a rosy bee-eater, but they're almost always just flying over. In some little remnant patches um, of 
forest here, we're going to be looking for this very rare bird, the white spotted flufftail. And those that have birded in Africa before might know how difficult flufftails are to see, but they're really, really tricky, but we do have a good chance. Um, another interesting family here, it's a Nikita, the Western Nikita, and these are also in their own family. Good one for family listers. And some other nice birds like Blue Cuckoo Shrike, and of course more sunbirds, like this splendid sunbird. And of course many uh, waxbills as well. This is a real shy waxbill, very difficult to see. It's called a black-bellied seed cracker. From the farm bush, uh, one afternoon we're going to head up to the Pra River. Um, just next to a town, you can see the river splits into some little islands here. And on these we're going to be looking for the rock pratincol. There's also a very rare species of swallow here called the white-throated blue swallow, um, which we should see. Um, and nearby we'll check out a sort of culvert under the road, uh, like a little tunnel. And when you get close, thousands of these Prusa's swallows uh, swarm out. And sometimes we'll see these nearby um, going down to little muddy puddles, collecting mud for their mud nests. From Kakam, we're going to drive back to Cape Coast and then along westwards along the the highway towards uh, Ancasa National Park and we're going to stop at an area of mangroves. Here we're going to look for this rather dull colored sunbird called a mouse brown sunbird. Quite an unusual looking bird. This is usually a good place to see an um, orange weaver as well. But our main target is this very rare duck called the Hartlaub's duck and here you can see a pair flying in with blue patches in their wings. It's a very rare duck, very unusual looking, sort of uh, chest and belly and black head and a pale spot to the bill. If we, if we miss them here at the mangroves, we have another chance to find them in Ancasa. And next we stopped at a small lake. It didn't look too interesting to me, just being surrounded by these um, oil palms. But the local guide seemed pretty confident they were going to find some good birds there. Um, and the local guide and his assistant and the driver, they were all sort of trying to outdo each other and he could, who could find their best bird. Um, the guide found this beautiful uh, shiny blue kingfisher. Um, his assistant found these uh, interesting African pygmy geese. And then finally the driver managed to spot the very rare African finfoot here as well. So uh, yeah, that worked out pretty well in our favor. A little further on, on the way to Ankasa, we came across some of these uh, Sabine's spine tails, a very rare member of the swift family. So from the mangroves, uh, we drive further towards Ankasa. You can see the extent of this beautiful forest here. It's a really incredible place. And it's just full of wildlife and it's one of those places where anything could be possible. You know, I think there's wild forest elephants in there and these rare antelope, it's called bongos and there's probably leopards in there. And it's, it's just a really exciting yeah. place. Yeah. This is at the gate to Ancasa, and we're saying goodbye to this disturbed farm bush behind us and uh, moving into the very nice forest inside. See a bit further in, uh, you get this really nice habitat. Um, and it's nice birding along this track as well. We drive along here, drive some stretches um, and walk some stretches. And you can bird in a group, you know, you don't have to be in single file, you can uh, use a scope. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's a very nice place to bird. This is at the camp inside. There's uh, a bathroom here. Um, we used to stay at a hotel about an hour's drive away, which was um, totally unsuitable. But uh, here we camped last time and it was really nice to be inside the forest. Um, you can go owling and really be there first thing in the morning. So the next morning we're going to set off early, drive along the, um, the road at dawn. This is one bird that often comes in to feed at little puddles in the road. It's called the dwarf bittern. It's quite widely distributed in Africa, but it's always very difficult to see. And there's some nice big trees in Ankasa. See here with these um, very distinctive buttress roots. And we're going to go and look for the largest member of the Turaco family, the great blue Turaco. A really huge bird. If we did miss the Heart Labs ducks at the last place, um, there's a little pond here that we can try for them. And here we have a pair of them perching up in the trees. Ancasa is a great place for kingfishers. There's a whole bunch of different species here. This is the African pygmy kingfisher. Um, we'll also have chances for the chocolate-backed kingfisher. 
um, the blue-breasted kingfisher, a really beautiful bird. And this very special bird, tiny little thing called the white-bellied kingfisher. Normally you just see them flying along a little forested stream or across the road. But a friend of mine, Graham, he, uh, he managed to get a really beautiful picture of mm. this. From Ancasa, we're going to drive back to Kakam where we spend the night. Um, and then the following day, we're going to go to look for the Picathartes um, in the afternoon. We arrive at a small village um, where we park the vehicles and then we walk up into the hills to go and look for the Picathartes. Our ground agent actually built a school in this little village and they support these, uh, this community. So the, the foreign visitors are always very well received. The people in this area, they got coffee and uh, cacao so we can see them uh, drying their beans here. This is our target, the white-necked rockfowl or picathartes, a um, really weird sort of otherworldly bird. Um, almost impossible to see just out in the forest, um, but the only way you can find it is by um, waiting at their roosting site, which is always um, in the base of a big rock. Um, and they build these mud nests um, in sort of rock overhangs. Got a bit of footage here um, taken by my boss Keith Barnes who just came back from there. Um, see these birds just preening away. It's another one slightly closer. Um, the old name for white-necked Picathartes was yellow-headed. You can see this sort of yellow bare skin on the head, big black patches, but they are really weird looking bird um, and this always gets the bird of the trip I mean, it's, it's usually a, not, not a contest at all but um, this is the one that everybody came to see our um, ground agent has actually never missed it on any of their tours so it's um, as far as anything can be in this world uh, it's pretty much guaranteed it's another bird um, hopping down here but yeah we usually get to watch them for quite a while We usually just go and look for the Picathartes, anything else we see is a bonus, but one bird we do often see, especially on the way back in the late afternoon, early evening, um, is a rufous-sided broadbill, which often get quite active then, doing their little flight displays and vocalizing. And this, of course, is another interesting family, African broadbills. After seeing the Picathartes, we've got a bit of a drive up to the city of Kumasi and we're probably going to be getting in quite late in the evening. So we just stay one night there. The next morning, we're going to be heading to the Bobiri Butterfly Reserve. And this is our main target here, the red-billed dwarf hornbill. You should have seen the black dwarf already. Um, quite a rare bird, but um, it's a good place to see it and a lot of other um, rainforest birds here. This is pretty much our last rainforest birding of the trip, so uh, with the last chance to pick up a few extra birds. Uh, this is a hairy-breasted barbet. Uh, we may see the blue-throated roller here. Very rare bird, the red-chested owlet. Um, Yellow-browed Cameroptera, and another Cameroptera, the olive-green Cameroptera. And also we might see the chestnut cap flycatcher. Should be some weaver species there as well. This is a type of forest weaver called the red-headed malimbe. And another waxbill species called the chestnut breasted nigrita. Of course, it's a butterfly sanctuary. So uh, yeah, we should see a lot of butterflies as well. Ghana is absolutely fantastic for butterflies. You could actually just do a butterfly tour on its own, but uh, we often do a little bit of butterflying during the day when it's a bit hot to bird. And um, this is a monarch, uh, African monarch butterfly, Got different species of uh, saw tails. And this is a beautiful one called the red glider. It's actually landed on someone's hat there. Okay, now we have a long drive to the north um, and our next site is called Mole National Park. The way in, the road in to Mole is quite interesting. It's usually pretty full of birds. So we usually make a few birding stops on the way. Um, See, it's quite sort of different habitat to what we've experienced so far. 
And um, we should arrive here at the Mole Motel, where we're going to be staying for the next um, three nights. There's great birding just outside the rooms. Uh, here's a little viewpoint. And from here, you can see these are our rooms just right here. And there's a restaurant and a pool over there. Um, and then we've got a view down on the big water hole down below where often uh, elephants can be seen. Um, and up here in these trees is also fantastic birding usually. Down below we can see these uh, elephants. Mole has got quite a healthy population of elephants. And often we can get fairly close to them. You can see we've got a, an armed guard there with us at all times. It's even our, uh, our driver, I think, taking a little picture of himself. We might also see some more olive baboons and maybe a new monkey, a Calthrix monkey. This is the sort of habitat we're going to be birding inside Mole. Sort of long dry grass and uh, low bushes and trees. And some of the birds that we might find are the helmeted guinea fowl. Um, the one in this area of course has not much of a helmet. And we should see a few franklins like this double spurred franklin and the white throated franklin usually found around the airstrip. And it's also good for raptors like this battleur. And here's a grasshopper buzzard. In the past um, this was a very good tour to see Pell's Fishing Owl. We actually called the tour Picathartes and Pell's at one point, but that particular roosting bird seemed to m move and yeah, then it got a little bit more difficult, but they are still occasionally seen. Here is another bird we're going to be looking for at night. It's called the Standard Winged Nightjar. Really incredible bird. Just the body itself just looks like any other nightjar, but then it has these ridiculously long feathers coming out of its wings. Um, we had one perched up on a little post once with a, with the long feathers hanging down. And sometimes we'll see them flying around um, and they hold their standards up in the air. It's a really amazing thing to see, really one of the uh, top birds in Africa. We may come across one or two mammals at night as well, like this common genet. And maybe even an interesting reptile, like this African fat-tailed gecko. The next morning we're going to go and look at some uh, more open dry areas where we might find uh, Denim's Busted and this very unusual plover called the Forbes Plover. It looks very similar to a three-banded plover but it has a very restricted um, habitat preference. We may see more bearded barbets which we saw down in the south and other bee eaters like this red-throated bee eater. I personally love this beautiful blue color under the tail, it's like perfectly blue, really beautiful birds. Some of the colourful birds we might find are like common gonolek and some more dull coloured ones like this uh, moustached grass bird. It's one of the birds that sometimes we see outside our rooms, the African blue flycatcher. And of course more sunbirds. This is a pygmy sunbird with these very long tail feathers and a beautiful scarlet chested sunbird. And um, we should see a few different species of waxbills as well like this common um, red-cheeked cordon bleu. From Mole, we're going to head further north and we may stop um, at a little lake um, near the town of Nasia. We just stop along the road here and we're going to walk down and go and bird around this uh, small lake. This is one of the birds we're going to look for, the African pygmy goose, uh, which you may have seen already, and maybe get an uh, African jacana. This is a bird that becomes very common up here, the red-chested swallow. And we may see some more grasshopper buzzards, which are also very common in this area. And also uh, there's a very unusual corvid called the piak piak, which um, hangs around um, cattle. And might see some different waxbills, like this uh, African silverbill. Um, this is a big target here, the quail finch. Um, often when we walk around um, down below, we'll flush them up, but sometimes we get to see them on the ground as well. And from Nasia, we're going to drive north to the Tongo Hills. This is a very dry area of big hills. And then there's these lower piles of um, big rocks and very interesting scenery. Um, and there's a few interesting birds that we can see around here. Um, the very suitably named rock loving cysticola. Um, another bird we often see is the fox kestrel. From the Tongo Hills, we're going to head to our next birding site in the next morning, which is the Tono Dam, which has really good birding. Um, very open habitat here. 
but uh, it's just, just alive with birds and some really good ones. It's usually quite a few locals around here. You can see a couple of local boys with their donkey. Um, some of the birds we might see at Tonner Dam uh, include a uh, long-tailed glossy starling and the beautiful veilet barbet and the Abyssinian roller. Here you can see with its brown back, but uh, from the side you see all these different shades of blue. Yeah, it's a really uh, stunning bird. And this is the main target, the four-banded sand grouse, which we often um, get if we wait around. And from Tonno Dam, we're going to head to our last site of the tour. And we're going to be looking for a very special bird, the Egyptian plover. This is a confluence of two rivers, the Nakamba and the Nuhau River, and they join to form the White Volta. And this is where we're going to be looking for the Egyptian plover. You see the land between the two rivers here. This is no longer Ghana. This is actually Burkina Faso. So we're really in the very far north of the country now. There's usually quite a lot of locals around here, kids playing in the water and fishermen and all sorts of people going about their business. You can see some local agriculture here, some maize and some onions. The people are very friendly, especially the kids they're all running up and wanting to talk to us. Um, yeah, they're very sweet. Some of the birds we might see around here include the northern red-billed hornbill. On one trip, we got this um, real rarity for Ghana, the uh, African skimmer. And this is our main target, the Egyptian plover. It's not a plover. Uh, it was considered before a member of the, um, the Corsa and the Pradinkol family. But a few years ago, it was put in its own family. So family listers are going to be very happy to see this. This is a very reliable location as well. I almost always get this bird here. Uh, really unusually patterned, beautiful patterning in the wings. Yeah, but we should get to see this bird quite close. Um, get good views and photographs. And that will be the end of the trip. We're gonna drive back down to the town of Tamale where there's an airport and we fly back to Accra where we finish the tour. Okay, that's the end of the tour. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it's a wonderful place to visit, amazing birds, um, amazing places. Um, so I really hope you've enjoyed it. Um, please don't forget to check out our other um, virtual tours. And thank you very much for supporting us.